Hello, today we're going to be talking about the importance of side characters. Now, side characters, just to make sure that we're clear on the definition, is a character or characters who enhance the story but don't play a main role. So when I say side characters, I don't mean Ron Weasley from Harry Potter. He actually would be considered a um, main character, not the main character, but a main character. If they are playing a pivotal role in the plot um, consistently, then that makes them a main character, even if they're not the main character. Kind of like how Katniss is the main character in Hunger Games, but Peeta very much is still a main character, and so is Gale um, and Prim. So those are all examples of main characters. However, when you look at those stories, you can also say Neville Longbottom would be a great side character. Um, Severus Snape is also a side character. Um, McGonagall is very much a side character. Severus being less, uh, being less of a side character than McGonagall, obviously. Um, then you also have other examples in the Hunger Games, such as um, President Coyne. Even though she affects the plot, she is very much not in the plot until book three. Um, as a result, she is technically a side character. Um, you also have other side characters, such as Rue, and such as, um, oh man, I can't remember his name, but there's a guard that she actually really um, likes and befriends in The Hunger Games, um, who later becomes an Avox. He is very much a side character. He plays a, he enhances the story, but he doesn't play a main role. Um, her mom even would be considered a side character purely because of the fact that she is not actively part of the plot for a lot of the time, but she is there still. All right, and it does enhance her backstory. Moving right along, um, the things we're going to be talking about today specifically are mentors, parental figures, comedic relief, info dump characters, siblings, best friends, and teachers. Obviously there are way more than this, but this is what I felt I could cover given the time frame that I have of 15 minutes. Um, obviously all of these can be main characters, but right now we're going to talk about them as side characters since they are commonly side characters. First off, mentors. A lot of times mentors end up being a side character purely because they help them get to a certain spot and then after that they let them go and may or may not be ever heard from again. Or they may die, in which case they're no longer main character because they're dead. Um, unfortunately, the death of the mentor is a very popular trope. Um, that being said, with a mentor figure, you want to make sure that they still feel like they have a well-rounded character, that they have value, that they have a backstory themselves, that they aren't flat, and that they can make their own dynamic decisions, and that theoretically, if you were to keep them on, you could have them be a main character. I think a well-written side character should always have the potential of being a main character, but then be resigned to not being a main character. Um, as far as that goes, similarly with parental figures, especially in middle grade, a lot of times these parental figures end up playing very much a side role. Um, you want them to be more of a main role, but they end up not being for whatever reason. A great example of this is Percy Jackson. His mom very much is a side character. She's not actively there for most of the book, and yet him missing his mom and him wanting to help his mom and him wanting to... Um, do things for his mom and not disappoint his mom and things like that very much influences all of his decisions. She enhances the story by being there, but she isn't always there and therefore doesn't play a main role. Um, similarly, there are a lot of parental figures like with Hunger Games where she does not play a main role in helping her win the Hunger Games or being um, around when the whole uh, sorry rebellion happens. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. But that doesn't mean that she doesn't play a part in, being, in creating who Katniss is as a character and supporting Katniss when she feels she can, in what ways she can, um, due to, you know, being traumatized and a little bit repressed because of that trauma. Um, that is a great way of giving a dynamic character. She's a very dynamic character. She could have her own book if she wanted to. Katniss's mom could. It'd be a very sad ending uh, to the book because she's so traumatized based on all the terrible things that happened. But um, she could have her own book, very much so. She has depth. She has meaning. She just isn't physically there all the time. She enhances the story by existing rather than by physically being there. Her physical presence doesn't change the story. It's more of her mental presence and her effect on Katniss previously in her background. 
Um, next is comedic relief. Uh, especially when you have a really dark and depressing story, you may need a good dose of comedic relief. Um, now these comedic relief characters can be fun to just make them funny and dorky, but it's nice to also make them well-rounded. It's nice to make them have a backstory too. In a lot of ways, um, Neville Longbottom was that, where he felt like a comedic relief and yet he had his own backstory and he grew in depth and he became a different person as you got to know him. And yet he still had moments where he was absolutely hilarious due to various hijinks that he got himself into. Um, <laughs> As a result, um, he play, he is very much a side character, but he enhances the story because he is a dynamic, rounded character rather than being flat. Now, info dump characters. They are flat characters who enhance the story because of the fact that they help give information in a fun, quippy way. A great example of this is from the X-Files with the um, three people who run the Lone Gunman magazine. Um, you'll probably know them as Briar, Langley, and Fro Hickey. Um, <laughs> if you haven't seen X-Files, just look up The Lone Gunman and a couple clips on them and you'll understand. They're info dump characters, 100%, but they do so in such a fun way, in such a way that enhances the story that you almost don't want to let them go. They're very fun characters. And yet, they were made to be info dump characters, to just give information in a fun way that enhanced the story. Um, they aren't very dynamic. Um, they make them more dynamic as the series goes on, but they aren't very dynamic at first. At first, they're very flat. They're just these paranoid crazies living in their shed who just so happen to know a lot of information that could, may or may not be helpful to Mulder and Scully. Um, as a result, this definitely helps not only build comedic relief, but also give info dump um, in a way that feels cohesive, natural, and fun. Um, all right, next thing I want to talk about is siblings. Uh, a lot of characters have siblings that end up being side characters. For example, Percy Weasley. Um, seeing what Percy goes through and what his family goes through due to Percy's actions is dramatic. <laughs> and it very much enhances the story and makes you think about like, whoa, people are actually taking sides now, you know? <laughs> it makes you think differently. Um, with siblings, that definitely helps enhance things. It also helps enhance Ron's relationship because he doesn't feel he can ever live up to Percy. Um, this very much enhances the story while still being very flat. We barely know anything about Percy except that he, you know, is all stuffed up and snobby and has problems with a devotion to the government over his own family. That's about it. Um, or at least that's how I feel about it. Maybe y'all feel differently, but I feel like Percy is a very flat character, and yet he does enhance the story as a side character because of the fact that it helps give more depth to Ron and to his family members that are more main characters. Um, next, we're going to talk about best friends. Best friends, honestly, is one of my favorite ones. Um, this one's tricky because they can often be main characters like Hermione and Ron. Very much best friends who are main characters. However, you can also have best friends who aren't main characters. Um, a great example of this, oh man, no. A great example of this would be um, Grover in the second edition of the series, the Blood of Olympus rather than the original Percy Jackson series. In the second um, rendition of the series, Blood of Olympus, Grover is almost not there entirely. He is very much a side character the, to the point where he's almost invisible. Um, I don't even know if he shows up for most of it. Um, but it is he's still one of Percy's best friends, and mentioning that he's missing Grover, and mentioning that he wishes Grover were around, and what he wonders Grover's doing, are very much all things that, I hope I'm saying this right, um, I'm, if I'm misnaming him, for some reason I feel like I'm saying the wrong name, then please let me know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they, they're best friends, and yet he's not as much a dynamic part of the second series. Um, he is very much a best friend who has become a side character. He isn't as much in the foreground. Um, but that's okay, because he helps build a dynamic connection between Percy and Camp Half-Blood. And he also gives him um, other reasons to look into the gods and their mystery, such as Pan. Um, it definitely enhances, in my opinion, the story and the way it moves along, despite the fact that um, he is almost never there. 
All right, the last one I'm gonna talk about is teachers. Um, just like in Harry Potter and many other places, teachers can be very fascinating background slash side characters. Um, this goes similarly with the mentor figure, but not necessarily the same. For example, um, a great side character like Professor McGonagall. Like I said at the beginning, she's a side character and she's a teacher. She's not really a mentor though. She just catches them every once in a while and they get in detention and that's about it. <laughs> um, Professor McGonagall tries to be, a, you know, do her own thing and tries to make her own decisions, but ultimately um, we only really see her when she's interacting with um, Harry Potter getting in trouble. Um, so as a result, she enhances the story because she helps it feel more real, feel more dynamic, but she is still very much a side character as a teacher and as a professor. Um, all right, well, thank you so much, and I hope that you have learned a little bit more about how to apply side characters and examples of side characters. That would be great to apply to your own writing. If you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments below.